Thank you for joining me. My name is Echo. Please, if this is your first time here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. If this is not your first time, thank you for joining me again. I've seen that I have new subscribers. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. I'm so excited to have you all. How are you guys doing? How is your visa application going? How is everything? And congratulations to those who have already gotten their visas. I'm happy for you all. Um, for those of you that are still in the process of application, I wish you all the best. I pray you all get approvals soon. Some of you have someone or people waiting to welcome you from the airport, help you settle in. Like It's a good thing to have people do that for you. But I know a lot of you don't have anyone to do that for you and um, like you're coming into a new country and you don't know anyone, you don't know what to do, you're just clueless. <laughs> I understand that feeling, but trust me, you're going to scale through. Um, so far, you have an open mind to understand how the system works here and um, it's very good. Um, some of you are already finding accommodation and some of you have already gotten accommodation. For those of you still finding accommodation, I shared a video um, before on how I was able to get a apartment before arriving Canada and I also shared on tips on how to get an apartment in Canada so do well to watch that video so that it will guide you and help you in your accommodation finding process after getting your permit you are now in Canada now what what are the steps to take what are the things you have to do all these questions will be going through your mind before you come into Canada or during your first week in Canada. So I'm going to be sharing some things you can do your first week arriving in Canada. I hope this is going to be of help so you don't get confused. When I arrived in Canada, I wish there was someone to guide me, tell me, oh, did this at this point. I, I wish there was someone to just like um, take me around, like help me get used to the system. But... I didn't have anyone there and um, I don't want you to go through the same. Though it wasn't difficult for me to adjust, yes. But I know some persons, it's going to be difficult for them to adjust. So I'm sharing these tips in order to help you adjust easily when you arrive in Canada. Number one, get a phone number. When you arrive at any international airport in Canada, there is a booth you can ask around the airport so they can direct you. And then you can get your number there. Some people don't get their numbers immediately. They wait to leave the airport. And then maybe days later, they'll get their SIM cards. Or, you know, you want to stay online. Your local network from your country may not work in Canada. Or it's going to be very expensive when you're roaming. So um, I would advise you get it at the airport. I did that for myself. And then when you get to this booth, you can ask them to tell you the packages they have. Some of them offer student packages, like the one I went for, which is Bell, offered me a student package. And um, they spent some time um, telling us about the different packages they have, the advantages of all the packages. And I was able to pick the one best for me, which is not too expensive. And that's what I've been using so far. And it's been very good. But you can check other service providers. I'm sure they have um, other options or cheaper options, depending on what you want. You need your ID, which is your passport, and um, your proof of status in Canada, which is your permit, which you'll be given at the border in order to get a phone number. Some of them offer free calls to Canadian numbers and free calls also to the US. So just get to know about the kind of package you want. Two, get your SIN number. That is your social insurance number. This is a nine-digit number that you need to work in Canada and also to access some government programs. An employer can legally pay you if you don't have the same. This number is personal to you. It's kind of private. You don't share it easily. You don't need this number to apply for a job. You don't need this number to rent an apartment. Because there are some landlords and employers that will ask, for your sin, but do not give it to them because you don't need it to apply for a job and you don't need it to rent an apartment. It's private to you. Don't give it out easily. 
There are several instances where you don't need to provide your SIN. Even though you are requested, you can check the IRCC website to know instances where you do not have to provide this number. In order to get this number, you can apply in person or you apply online. For me, in order for convenience, I applied online and in two days time, they delivered my number to my apartment. To apply in person, um, you have to book an appointment or you check for the working hours. You can get this number at the nearest service Canada around you. You can um, search for it online. Just search for the nearest service Canada close to you. Um, when you search for it, you can see the working times, the opening times and closing times. And then you can also get the option for booking too. There is no fee requirement to get this number. You don't have to pay for it. And in order to get this number, you need your ID. You can use your international passport for your ID. And you need your proof of status in Canada. And you also need proof of address. So if you are renting any property, you can use um, the rental agreement as your proof of address. Number three, open a bank account. So you can open an account to get access to a debit card and a credit card. They have several banks in Canada and these banks each offer their own packages. There are some banks that offer student packages. Just browse about the kind of bank you want. Check on the packages they have to offer. Check on the services they have to offer to newcomers and also students. For some banks, you can open an account online and your debit card and credit card will be delivered to your home address. Or you go to the bank and let them know you want to open an account. In order to open an account, you need your ID. You can use your international passport. And then you also need your proof of status in Canada to open an account. I opened an account with Scotia Bank and um, RBC. I opened the RBC account online. I didn't have to go to the bank to do that. I opened it and my debit card and credit card was delivered to my address. RBC offered me a 2000 Canadian dollar credit limit. I also opened an account with Scotia Bank. I don't know if they offer online account opening, but I went to the bank to open an account because I went to do something close to the bank. So I just decided to walk in and open an account there. And their customer service was good. And they have a student package too. They will discuss with you the kind of packages they have. Even online too, you get to see the options. For Scotia Bank, I was offered a 1,000 credit card limit. Please use your credit card where having this kind of limit doesn't mean you spend all of it and not replace it you need to have a good spending habit yes you need this credit card to build your credit history in canada credit history is very important you may need it later so you can use this credit card to buy something and then replace it weekly so you don't miss your payment date you can um, have a good spending habits so you don't forget to replace your money but it's good to have good credit history i know some of you are trying to find accommodation and some of the um, landlords are asking for credit history and you can see if you don't have you can have access to some things yeah so have a good credit history get a credit card to help you build your credit history there are several advantages to having a good um, credit history so you can make research on that and understand how the credit history works because i know some of you don't like oh i don't want to borrow you are using and replacing yes and at the same time building your credit history do enough research on how credit card works so you have a good credit history four register for health insurance you can register for a provincial health service plan in order to get access to government healthcare services. You have to live in a province for three months in order to qualify to get this plan. So when you arrive, you can apply so that in the next three months, you get your card and then you can start using the plan. You can apply for this plan in person, online or by mail. I did my own application online. You need your ID, proof of um, status in Canada and also proof of residence in the province you are in. Check your province website to get more information on the health insurance plan. Once you get your card, you can now find a family doctor. 
some schools offer insurance plan depending when you can get the government insurance plan i paid for an insurance plan in my school that's covering me for three months depending when i get the government insurance plan i did my application online and um, i'm waiting to get my card in the next um, one month five get your photo id or driver's license if you're not ready to get your driver's license yet you can get a photo id you know to get a driver's license just um, check for the requirements for your province and then you get more information you can get a photo id in the same place as the driver's license so just search for the nearest driver's licensing office and then you can book an appointment um that's what i did i booked an appointment and i met the in person um, to take um, my picture for the id and in order to get this id you need your id which you can use your international passport and your proof of status in canada which is your permit most they are done processing it because you don't get it that day they will send it to your address so just search online for the nearest driver licensing office close to you transportation so there are several transportation services in canada we have uber we have lyft we have bus we have train um uber and lyft is kind of expensive if you're trying to cut down costs you can get a compass card in order to use um, bus and train so it's a card that you can um, load you can put the amount you want or you can do a monthly subscription if you go out a lot you can get this card at the train station as a newcomer you have to understand how the bus system works and also trains work look for the nearest train station close to you and also bus because it's less expensive than using uber and lyft and maybe you can have a mix of both you live close to a train station or bus stop our advice you get a compass card to aid your movement so with this compass card you can use it for buses and also trains our advice you get it because it's not that expensive in order to use the buses and trains know their schedule you can use google maps or use the transit um, app to know when the bus is going to arrive at a bus stop and to know when a train to is also going to arrive you have to learn how to use um, maps in order to navigate a new place is going to help you so doing all this um, will make you settle easily in canada take your time to settle don't be in a hurry um for some of you it's going to be overwhelming but don't be in a hurry to do everything with time you get used to it like the first week is always like oh you're in a new place how will you get to know a lot of things for just be patient with yourself and um, you get to understand how the system works just give yourself time you get used to things here and i know once you arrive some of you start looking for jobs i shared a video on how i was able to get my job in one week and also tips on how to get jobs in canada you can um, do well to watch the video and then if you are um, stuck at any time don't be scared to ask questions you can ask people questions anytime you're stranded don't be shy to ask questions it's not being stranded if you're already here you can also share some tips in the comment section so that people can get to learn um, share anything i've missed out on you can share your experiences too because i know some of you have very funny experiences in your first days in canada so you can share for people to learn um, you can share in the comment section so that those who are yet to come in will get to learn about your experiences if you're in vancouver also let me know you're in vancouver so we can connect i'm trying to connect with more persons in vancouver not just in vancouver alone but anywhere in canada let's connect too thank you for watching today's video please if you've not subscribed to my channel don't forget to hit the subscribe button please also share and like my videos um share to those who need this kind of information even if you don't need it now thank you Bye.